good morning students today we are going to discuss abdominal pelvic and peritoneal cavity the learning objectives for my today's class are at the end of this session students should be able to differentiate between abdominal pelvic cavity abdominal cavity and peritoneal cavity abdominal pelvic cavity is located between the thorax and pelvis it lodges important abdominal and pelvic viscera it is important clinically surgeon is called abdominal pelvic cavity a magic box knowledge and experience is needed to solve clinical problems arising out of developmental anomalies boundaries of abdominal pelvic cavity this cavity is bounded superiorly by thoraco abdominal diaphragm inferiorly by peritoneum lining the pelvic floor posteriorly it is bounded by posterior abdominal wall in the abdominal region and posterior pelvic wall in the pelvic region anteriorly it is bounded by anterior lateral abdominal and pelvic walls major part of abdominal pelvic cavity lies between diaphragm superiorly and inlet of pelvic cavity inferiorly and is called abdominal cavity so abdominal pelvic cavity is divided into abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity abdominal cavity is bounded superiorly by thoraco abdominal diaphragm and inferiorly by inlet of pelvis as shown in this diagram the part of abdominal pelvic cavity below the pelvic inlet is called true pelvic cavity the two cavities that is abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity are continuous with each other both are lined by peritoneum bony pelvic cavity is composed of sacrum and coccyx posteriorly and two hip bones anterior laterally this cavity is divided by inlet of the pelvis into fallus and true pelvis fallus pelvic cavity lies above the pelvic brim and true pelvic cavity lies below the pelvic brim fallus pelvis is included with the abdominal cavity the pelvic brim divides pelvic cavity into true and fallus pelvis above the pelvic inlet lies fallus pelvis which is included in abdominal cavity below the pelvic inlet lies true pelvis boundaries of abdominal pelvic cavity on surface inferiorly there is simple physis pubis inguinal folds and iliac crests posteriorly it is bounded by lumbar vertebrae and paravertebral musculature of back in relation to the trunk abdomen extends superiorly to the level of diaphragm that is t8 which is higher than the level of the sternal joint that is t9 division of abdominal pelvic cavity inferiorly abdominal pelvic cavity is bounded by thoraco abdominal diaphragm inferiorly by pelvic diaphragm it is divided by inlet of the pelvis into abdominal cavity which lies above the pelvic inlet and pelvic cavity which lies below the inlet of pelvis if we take a transverse section of the abdominal cavity it is composed of posterior abdominal wall which includes bodies of five lumbar vertebra in the region of abdomen and sacrum and coccyx in pelvic region posterior abdominal wall as shown in this diagram is composed of bones muscles and ligaments the anterior lateral abdominal wall is composed of muscles posterior abdominal wall is composed of bones muscles and ligaments and anterior lateral abdominal wall is composed of three muscles external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis in the posterior abdominal wall there are bodies of the vertebra attached to the anterior lateral surface of the bodies of the vertebra or sauce major and sauce minor muscles between the supine of vertebra and transverse process are parasupinal muscles parasupinal muscles are also called erector supine or multifidus parasupinal muscles lie between the middle and posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia is attached to hip of transverse process of lumbar vertebrae whereas the posterior layer is attached to supine between the anterior and the middle layer of the thoracolumbar fascia lies quadratus lumborum muscle which is also included in muscles of the posterior abdominal wall the anterior lateral abdominal wall is formed of three muscles external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis as shown in this diagram posterior abdominal wall is composed of bones which includes five lumbar vertebrae and in the region of the pelvis it is composed of sacrum and coccyx attached to the lumbar vertebrae are sauce major and minor lateral to sauce major and minor there is quadratus lumborum which lies between anterior and middle layers of thoracolumbar 
fascia whereas the anterior lateral abdominal wall is composed of three muscles external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis superiorly abdominal wall is bounded by thoracoabdominal diaphragm which is also lined by peritoneum anteriorly on either side of the midline lies rectus abdominis and paramedialis muscle in the rectus sheath now what is peritoneal cavity peritoneum is a serous membrane that lines the abdominal pelvic cavity it covers the anterior and posterior abdominal walls and also on the surface of the diaphragm and floor of the pelvic cavity as shown in this diagram this red dotted line represents parietal peritoneum which lines the anterior abdominal wall posterior abdominal wall under surface of diaphragm and pelvic floor thus peritoneal cavity is a serous membrane which lines the abdominal cavity it has got two layers parietal layer and visceral layer between the two layers lies peritoneal cavity as shown in this diagram if we start from midline anteriorly this red line represents the parietal peritoneum which lines the anterior lateral as well as posterior abdominal walls it gets reflected from the posterior abdominal wall as a double layered fold of peritoneum and encloses viscera to form the visceral peritoneum between the visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum lies potential space called peritoneal cavity space between the parietal peritoneum or outside the parietal peritoneum and abdominal wall is called extra peritoneal space as shown in the simplified diagram abdominal cavity is lined inside by another cavity called peritoneal cavity so peritoneal cavity is a cavity within abdominal cavity and outside peritoneal cavity is extra peritoneal space the structures which lie within the peritoneal cavity are called intra peritoneal and those structures which lie outside the peritoneal cavity are called extra or retro peritoneal for example kidneys they are applied to the posterior abdominal wall they lie posterior to the peritoneum and are called retro peritoneal other examples of retro peritoneal structures are inferior vena cava on the right side and and abdominal aorta on the left side the right side of the body is called venous side of the body and left side is called arterial side of the body because inferior vena cava lies on the right side and abdominal aorta lies on the left side of the body thus abdominal cavity includes both peritoneal cavity as well as extra peritoneal space along with its contents the abdominal cavity is larger cavity than peritoneal cavity as shown in this diagram kidney suprarenal gland inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta are contents of abdominal cavity they lie posterior to peritoneum and are called retro peritoneal structures peritoneum cavity lines the abdominal wall the structures contained within the peritoneal cavity are called intra peritoneal it does not include retro peritoneal structures so within abdominal cavity is a serous membrane lined cavity called peritoneal cavity it is smaller than abdominal cavity abdominal pelvic cavity includes peritoneal cavity and extra peritoneal space i want to summarize this lecture as abdominal pelvic cavity is the largest cavity of body lined by serous membrane called peritoneum parietal peritoneum lines body wall and visceral peritoneum lines extra peritoneal surface of viscera peritoneal cavity is space between the two peritoneal layers containing small amount of peritoneal fluid which lubricates abdominal organs so peritoneal cavity lies within abdominal cavity and extra peritoneal space lies outside peritoneal cavity abdominal pelvic cavity is divided into abdominal and pelvic cavities by inlet of pelvis above the inlet lies abdominal cavity and below the inlet lies pelvic cavity both cavities are continuous with each other now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture the largest cavity of human body is abdominal cavity pelvic cavity abdominal pelvic cavity peritoneal cavity see is the correct option which cavity is used for dialysis in chronic renal disease abdominal cavity pelvic cavity extra peritoneal space peritoneal d is the correct option which of the following is a false statement abdominal cavity is larger than peritoneal cavity b false pelvis is included in abdominal cavity c abdominal pelvic cavity is the largest cavity of body d peritoneal cavity is larger than abdominal cavity d is false statement
which of the following is a false statement abdominal cavity and thoracic cavities are separated by thoraco abdominal diaphragm false pelvis is included in abdominal cavity abdominal pelvic cavities are continuous with each other volume of peritoneal cavity is equal to the volume of abdominal cavity d is the wrong statement abdominal cavity is larger than the peritoneal cavity because abdominal cavity also includes extra peritoneal space thank you for watching do not forget to like subscribe and share this video do not forget to subscribe my channel press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads